Good morning, everyone. So nice to have you with us. I want to welcome you if you're online um, and the brave souls who came out um, this morning. Um, uh, everyone I, everyone I, I, I tell say that the, the 10 o'clock service is bigger than the 8 o'clock service. They all look at me and say, well, my, my con- most of my congregations seem to sleep, like to sleep in, but you guys are the brave, the, the brave ones. You're here with the fit Jacksons. And, um, and so you didn't know that, did you? So um, here we are. Um, so I want, to, um, I want to talk to you about are you ready for promotion? Now, um, what happened was, was this week, um, uh, Pastor, I think his, his church is called the 3C um, Church, is... Uh, Bert Pretorius came here and he had some meetings with some people and he hosted it in Connection Cafe and I was sitting listening to him and um, I got a new insight or revelation into a story that I knew a lot about. One of the things that surprised me um, is how you can read read something in the Bible and you think you've, 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 everything is that you could possibly see in it is, is there, and then you'll get new revelation. Um, a lot of you who are in connect groups would know that feeling. You know, you would, sometimes we do two or three, like the one time, the one um, in, I think it was Matthew ten twenty seven. we did five outlines on one verse. People like, no, surely not. And each of them were completely different outlines. The layers in the Bible are remarkable. Now, the reason why the, rich, the story um, Jesus tells or, or that happened was is that um, why it's close to my heart is I was a huge fan of a hard rock band called Resurrection Band, and they were really radical. When, um, still like their music, but they were, and they hard rock blues and that and um, but they were really they were and are really radical for Jesus. They actually live in a commune um, where they share everything. Um, they at one stage they were the biggest band in the eighties. They were the biggest band in Christian band in America. And the next day they'd be working in the kitchens because they would serve the the homeless, uh, especially the widows and orphans. They saw that as their job. Um, in Chicago, which is is very very, uh, it's a it's a very South African city in that um, they're very very absurdly rich people. Um, actually, they'd be much richer than most South Africans, but rich people. But they're also very poor people, and um, that if it's I, I, on the fourth of July, they had. I think two years ago, they had 400 shootings on the 4th of July weekend. That's, that's, that's some bullets. That's almost like living in Azov style in Ukraine, that sort of bombardment of each other. But um, in their 20th anniversary concert, um, Glenn Kayser, who's the lead singer, preached about the rich young ruler and he, and he said, a lot of people, he, he walked away because he, he had a lot of stuff. And so I've always, because it was one of my favorite tapes. <laughs> oh, really? I, I laughed so hard, Cindy. You, had, you also enjoyed your tapes. <laughs> <laughs> for a shorter time than I did. Guys, d- does every pastor get heckled like this? Anyway, um, the bottom line is, is that um, I used to listen to it and he'd preach this. And, I, and so the Lord, I think, has given me quite a bit of insight. So let's start with the story and then I'm going to go give you a bit of background and then we're going to come back to the story. So are you ready? Okay, so... Um, I took the excerpt out of the Bible, Jesus counsels the rich young ruler. I don't know why he's called the rich young ruler, but that's 
That's what most people know him as. Now, it says, now, as he, that's Jesus, was going out on the road, one came running, knelt before him, and asked him, good teacher, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? Good teacher, what, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? Now, I need to explain a few things to you before I come back to the story. So let's start explaining. So I want to read to you from, and, and I need, before I explain what I need to explain, I need to give you background on the background. Are you ready for the background on the background? Okay, so 1 Peter 2 verse 9 says, But you are not like that, for you have been chosen by God himself. You are priest of the king, you are holy and pure, you are God's very own, all this so that you may show to others how God called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. So we know this, you are, um, uh, for you are a holy nation, a royal priesthood. That sh- you, we know, the, a lot of us will know the King James version of that. But the bottom line is, is that I believe very strongly in the priesthood of every believer. So I don't believe in a, a priesthood, a, a, a whole bunch of priests, and then the, the congregation. I believe that every single one of us are priests, and that God has made us priests. And what is a priest? It's someone that can communicate or connect with the Lord. So each of you are priests. We are a priesthood. We are the priesthood of Melchizedek, and Jesus is our high priest. But, and, and so one of the, and if you've hung around me long enough, one of the things you will notice is that I call upon lay people to do things for the Lord, to not just sit in the bench, just sit there and listen. I believe that God has got a calling for each of you and God wants to use you, each of you. So the quest, so that being said, I want to show you some, something very interesting in the Word of God. So let's look at 1 John 2, verse 12 to 13. It says, I am writing these things to all of you, my little children. So first, first level is little children. Because your sins have been forgiven in the name of, the Holy, of, of Jesus our Savior. I'm saying these things to you older men. Another level, older men, because you really know Christ, the one who has been alive from the beginning. And you young men, I'm writing to you because you've won your battle with Satan, and I'm writing to you young boys and girls because you too have learned to know God our Father. So if you read John and that it goes on, there's very clearly, there's the children, there's the young people, and there's the fathers and mothers, the mentors. So we have, in the scripture, how many levels do we have? Three. Three. Thank you, Peter. I saw that. I saw that hand. Let's, let's, go, let's go look at Matthew 13, verse 23. The seed that fell on good soil represents those who truly hear and understand God's word and produce a harvest of? 30, 60, and 100 fold. Now, one of, and even 100 times as much as they had been planted. So they, there's, there's different ty- types of seed, but one type of seed produces, a, the good seed produces 30, 60, and 100 fold. Now, a lot of you have heard the scripture, and it's been preached to you if, as if it's one level. And you will produce 30, 60, and 100 fold. Well, how can you produce 30, 60, and 100 fold at the same time? You produce 30, or you produce 60, or you produce 100 fold. So that the word of God may fall in your heart. Some of you will produce 30 fold return. Some will produce 60 fold return. Some will produce 100 fold return. What does that mean in maths? Some of you will produce 
some 600% and some 1,000%. How many levels are there? Three. So, let's go to Jesus in Matthew 10, verse 41 to 42. If you're in a connect group, you should know Matthew 10 by now, or if you, if you haven't got there yet in your connect group, you will know Matthew 10. We wrote 57 outlines on Matthew 10. So um, we spent more than a year on one chapter. But this chapter, I want to, so I want to read you the scripture. If you welcome a prophet because he is a man of God, you will be given the same reward as a prophet gets. If you welcome good and godly man because of his godliness, you will be given a reward like others. And if you... And if, as my representatives, you give even a cup of cold water to a little child, you will, you will surely be rewarded. Now, Jesus is speaking about his disciples and provision for his apostles as he sends them out. Some of them are prophets, speak on behalf of God. Some are righteous men who live a godly life. And some of them are little children. How many ranks are there? There are three ranks or three levels. So while I believe in the priesthood of every believer, I believe that there are three levels of people in this church. You are either a little child or a righteous man or woman or a father or mother in the Lord. Are you a priest? Yes. Does that mean that you're a father or mother in the Lord? No. In fact, the Bible says there are 10,000 teachers, which would probably be good men and women, but very few fathers and mothers in the Lord. So you have lots of little children, you have some good and righteous men and women, and then you have a few fathers and mothers in the Lord. There are three ranks. And you, whether you like it or not, you fall into one of those three ranks. What rank do you think you are? Online, guys watching, what rank do you think you are? Because you fall into one of these three levels or ranks. In fact, I'm gonna, this is a, a bit of a, an aside, but I think it's important to say. Um, in fact, actually, before I get there, um, there were also three levels or three different, two d very clear groups of Jesus in Jesus's disciples. Uh, in Luke twelve, um, Luke nine, verse one to two, it says, "One day Jesus called together his twelve disciples." and gave them power and authority to cast out all demons and to heal all diseases. Then he sent them out to tell everyone about the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. So, there was the 12. Let's, we jump to Luke 10, 1. It says, after this, the Lord appointed 72 others and sent them out ahead of him, two by two, into every town and place, where he himself was about to go. So there was a group of 72 that, that he sent out, and there was a group of 12 that he sent out. But who was there at the Last Supper? It was the 12. So there was disciples or apostles or messengers that went out, but there was 12 and, then there, and there were 72. So the different ranks very clearly in the, word, in the body of Christ. What's interesting, though, is, and I want to show you something, in the judgment of the nations, and in Matthew, Matthew 25, verse 31 to 32, it says, But when the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit upon his glorious throne. All the nations will be gathered in his presence, and he will separate the people, the peoples as a sheep separates, uh, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And so from that we, we see that there are going to be 
goat nations or goat people and sheep nations or people. Now, what is the criteria? What, what is the criteria for how that God will use to judge the nations? It says Matthew 25, verses 42 to 45, it says, for and he, Jesus is now speaking to the people that he judges. For I was hungry and you didn't feed me. The, the nations, I was thirsty and you didn't give me a drink. I was a stranger and you didn't invite me into your home. I was not, naked and you didn't give me clothing. I was sick and in prison and you didn't visit me. Then they will reply, Lord, when did you ev we ever see you hungry or thirsty or stranger or naked or sick in prison and not help you? And he will answer, I tell you the truth, when you refuse to help the least of these, my brothers and sisters, you are refusing to help me. So what's interesting about this is the least of these is the same. Remember I read you Matthew 10, verse 41 to 42. If you give a cup of cold water to the, it's the same word, the least of these. It's translated there as one of these children but one of the least of these. And so we say that we see that, that the lowest rank, which is children, if God, the nations will be judged by how they treat the lowest rank. Nations will be judged as sheep or goat nations by how they, they judge the lowest rank in the body of Christ. Why? Because just because you're, not, you, you're, you're in the lowest rank doesn't mean that God doesn't love you. He loves us all equally. He loves us all the same. Which is why he will judge the nations on how they treat the lowest rank of people in the body of Christ. But here's the thing, is that there's still three levels and surely you would want to be promoted. Who here wants to stay on the bottom rung for the rest of your life? God loves you. God cares about you. But surely you, you would want more for your life. If you're a child or, or the least of these in the body of Christ, don't you want to become, go to the next level, the righteous one, the young man or woman? who goes out and does stuff for Jesus. God wants us to be promoted up the rank. He just tells us to desire promotion, to go forward, to grow. In fact, one of, one of the things, one of the things that, that you um, have to know is that we have to grow and change. We are changed from glory to glory. One of the worst things you can, that you can say to a Christian is, ah, you haven't changed. In the world, it's like, you've changed. In, if they say to you, if, if, if someone says to you, you've changed, what is your response? Hallelujah, praise the Lord, I've been trusting for that. You have to change from glory to glory. If you're not changing, if you're not growing, you're dying. What happened to the fig tree? Jesus comes by the fig tree and there's no figs. What does he do? He curses it. Why? We have to produce fruit. We have to grow. What do you, what do you gardeners do when a, in, in your garden, if you're a serious gardener? I'm not a serious gardener. I'm not even a gardener. I don't even know that I own a garden. I just own a piece of land. So, I, so, so I, but uh, I'm told that if things don't grow, you pull them out. You cut them back. Oh, this stem is woody. You cut it back. Why? Because it stopped growing and producing. Am I right? You prune a plant because it's not producing. 
So we have to grow. We have to produce. We have to produce more fruit. In fact, and, and, and God doesn't just promote everybody. They have to be ready. He makes it difficult for people to be promoted. So in Matthew 8, verse 19 to 20, it says, And one of the teachers of the religious law said to him, Teacher, I will f- follow you wherever you go. So he's saying, I'm yours. What does Jesus say? Jesus replies, Foxes have dens to live in, birds have nests, but the Son of Man is no place even to lay his his head. A lot of people have interpreted this as Jesus saying, I'm homeless. I can show you that Jesus had a house. So this wasn't about homelessness. He was like, I'm not ready for you. In fact, in fact, although we need to desire promotion, God makes it quite difficult. Let's have a look at Paul. So God takes Paul, a a guy called Ananias, and now Paul had been behaving like like ISIS. No, seriously. You know those those madmen in Syria and northern Iraq around Mosul that were killing everybody and because they weren't serving the right God? Well, Paul was behaving just like ISIS. It's funny at first, but then you start to think of it and you think, geez. So this, I think, is a little amusing, is that God says to Ananias, he says, go see Paul. It's like, go see the, the, head, of the, go see the head of ISIS. <laughs> you know? So I, I think that if I were Ananias, I would have had a lot of arguments with God about this instruction. But then Ananias was obedient. And so what does he do? So Ananias went and found Saul. He laid his hands on him and said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus who appeared to you on the road has sent me so that you might regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Instantly something like scales fell from Saul's eyes and he gained his sight Then he got up and was baptized. Amazing. But, the, but it doesn't stop here. God wanted Paul to be promoted and he becomes an apostle later. But what, is he, what does God say to him? And the Lord said, go for Saul is my chosen instrument to take my message to the Gentiles and to kings, as well as the people of Israel. This is very important. And I will show him how much he must suffer for my name's sake. So when, so when God is telling you how difficult things are, what is his plan? His plan is to promote you. This is how God promotes you. He doesn't tell you, oh, everything's going to be fantastic and you're going to, and you're going to win the world and people 2,000 late, years later are going to be reading your, your, um, reading your, your, your letters and believing them and you're going to be revered even by the atheists and, and godly as a genius. He says, tell him how much he must suffer. So when God comes to you and says, listen, I've got something tough for you. What is God's plan? His plan is to? I hear one person who seems to understand. Online, help these people. Please. If God, if God is, is talking to you about a difficult situation, his plan is to? Promote you. Type that in if if you're watching. His plan is to promote you. So your difficult situation, his plan is to promote you. So let's get, so I think I've laid a foundation or given you enough background. Let's get back to the rich young ruler. So Jesus asks him, why do you call me good? Jesus asked, only God is truly good. So he's saying, basically Jesus is saying, who do you believe I am? But to answer your question, 
you know the commandments. You must not murder. You must not commit adultery. You must not steal. You must not testify falsely. You must not cheat anyone. Honor your father and mother. And he, Jesus goes through everything. And what is the man's what is the man's response? He says, teacher, the man replied, I've obeyed all these commandments since I was young. So, I've always done this, teacher. I've always done this. So, looking at, so what is Jesus' response? He says, looking at the man, Jesus felt genuine love for him. There's still one thing you haven't done, he, he told him. Go and sell all your possessions and give them to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come follow me. So what makes Jesus say this to him? He felt genuine love for him. Now when God asks you to do a hard thing, what is his plan for you? Pardon? Promotion. This guy had been doing what he needed to do at his level. And God asks him to do a hard thing. His plan is promotion. Promotion. So if God is asking you to do something, be a connect group leader or get involved in this or do that, and you feel overwhelmed by it, guess what? It's promotion. How can you ask me that of me, Jesus? Planning to promote you. In fact, I'll show you to what extent God is asking, planning to, was planning to promote him. Because after he goes, and Peter and them start asking him about what's really happened here. This is, let's see. We see in Matthew, Mark, sorry, Mark 10, verse 28 to 31, it says, Yes, Jesus replied. And I assure you that everyone who has given up houses or brothers or sisters or, or mother or father or, or children or pr property for my sake, for the, for the good news. So what was Jesus asking the, the rich young ruler to do? To give up property for the gospel's sake. So does, he, does the rich man, young ruler fall into this category of anyone who's given up property Family. Thank you, Wayne. Can you help everyone else in the church? <laughs> yes, thank you. The rest of you. Does the rich young ruler fall into this category? Yes. Jesus was asking him to give up houses or brothers or sisters for his sake, or property for my sake, for the good news now, let's listen to this very carefully. Will receive now. When, will they rece when would he have received? Now, which means then. This is 2,000 years ago. <laughs> Sorry about the tense. But what he's saying is this isn't some, because a lot of people see this as in the sweet by and by. But Jesus says, when will he receive it? He will receive it now. Type now into, if you're watching. If you are, if, if you in the congregation, say after me, now. Now. You will receive now in return. What will you receive? A hundred times as many houses, sisters, Brothers, sisters, mothers, children, and property, along with persecution. So it's not all good news. But what was Jesus saying? He was saying, if you, if, if you give it up for me, I'm going to give you a hundred times back. So Jesus wasn't trying to make this rich young ruler poorer. He was trying to make him a hundred times richer. He wasn't trying to take everything away from him. Well, he was at first. But his plan was to return everything a hundred times 
that which he had given up. So he was already rich, and God was like, yeah, I'll make you a hundred times richer. Jesus was like, yeah, let's do it. His plan was to promote this guy. When Jesus asks you something hard, what is his plan for you? Promotion. And in the world to come, the person will have eternal life. So not only am I going to bless him now, in the world to come, I'm going to give him eternal life. But many who are the greatest now will be the least important then. And those who seem least important now will be the greatest then. So we look around at people who've got stuff and we say, oh, they're great. Yeah. But, but they haven't given it up. And so what is Jesus saying? Give it up. I'm asking you a hard thing. I want to promote you to follow me. I want to promote you to be my disciple. I want to make you a hundred times richer. I want to bless you and I want to give you eternal life. Let's see what the... What was the rich young ruler's response to this? And this man fell, his face fell, and he went away sad, for he had many possessions. Was God planning to take his possessions away from him? Yes, at first, but then give him a hundred times more. So you say, well, why are you preaching about this year today? Well, God is wanting to promote a lot of you. He's asking more of your life. And a lot of you are saying, ah, I can't do that. That's too much, God. That's too much. But that's how he promotes you. Doesn't come and do the big sell. I'm going, he didn't tell the rich young ruler he was going to give him a hundred times more. He told him how he was going to go through it Tough time, he's going to end up with nothing at first. But that's how God promotes you. You get faced, and, and a lot of you stay little children, will stay little children for the rest of your life, unless when you're confronted with, with the choice, will I be promoted or not? And God always makes it hard. Always presents the downside. When pe- someone comes to you and says, do you want the good news or the bad news? What do you guys always ask for first? Bad news. He always gives you the bad news first. And a lot of you turn away. A lot of you turn away from that promotion. But I'm here to tell you that God wants to promote you. He doesn't want you to stay a little child for the rest of your life. He doesn't want you to stay even a righteous man or woman for the rest of your life. He wants to make you a mother or father in the faith. But the question is, when he comes to you, when you go to him and you say, I want more, and he tells you what the cost is, are you like the rich young ruler that walks away sad? Or are you, or will you be promoted? And I've seen this personally. I saw, I saw that, I saw my parents push in to want more from the Lord. And the denomination came and took their house away because they believed in the move of the Spirit and in in a multiracial church. The Lord's restored to them. I've seen my uncle and aunt in, in East London. Went off to Queenstown, gave up everything. Uncle's just built his second house in the same estate as Alex Ferguson. You know the soccer guy, Man United? Remember that team that used to win long, long ago? <laughs> Listen, I'm, I'm, I've been sort of a United fan. Crompton's come from Manchester way, way, way back. So, 
but they're super rich, the Fergusons. My uncle, and, and frankly, I don't know how they've done it. But you know what? The promise of the Lord is he will return a hundred times what you've given up. And he'll do it. But he comes with the bad news first, and a lot of you walk away. Are you willing to be promoted? Are you willing to go to the next level? For some of you, the next level is to just join a connect group. For some of you, it's to, to start a connect group and run a connect group. And for some of you, it's, it's much bigger things. But when, Jesus, when you go to Jesus and say, I want more of you, he says, great, do this. You're like, no, God. What you're doing is you're turning down a promotion because that's how God promotes you. I want more of Jesus. Fine, this is the price you'll pay. No, God. I want more of your presence, Jesus. This is what you need to do. No, God. He comes to you and he says, okay, do this. Say that. I'm not going to do that. But he keeps the, he keeps the, good, the good news back. Until you've made the choice to be promoted, and then you start to get discover the good news. God wants more of you. He wants to grow you up. He wants to use you. He wants to turn you into a blessing. A lot of people come to Jesus. Ah, oh, I want to serve Him, but I don't want to stop parting. Well, you're gonna. You're not gonna get promoted then. A lot of people, my family will reject me. Not going to get promoted. You have to pay the price. Be willing to pay the price for promotion. Is that the end of the story? No. God will restore and give increase on whatever you give up. But until you're willing to give up stuff, you're never going to grow in the Lord. And so God is calling you. I can feel there's a holy conviction here. Some of you are thinking, ooh, I see what happened there. Some of you are feeling regretful. Some of you, the Holy Spirit is showing where you've turned down promotion. Some of you have been wondering, God says it's time to be promoted. I want to lift you to the next level. I want you to be closer to me. I want you to be part of me. I want to bless you. But first, pay the price. I'm going to pray for you. I'm not going to call anybody out, but what I do want to do is I want to, I'm going to leave you in your benches, don't worry. I'm not going to ask you to pay a price today. But I want every, everyone to bow there. Actually, don't worry. If, if the Lord's been speaking to you and you just want encouragement and prayer today, just raise your hand and say, I want to be included in the prayer. Lord's been speaking to you. Raise your hand now. Online. Just type, pray for me. Come on. I see at the back there, the Lord's been speaking. Who else is there here? I'm not going to call you. This isn't a salvation article, um, altar call. This is a promotion altar call. Who here wants promotion? Lift your hand now. I'm going to pray for you. See hands going up. I want to be promoted. I've been scared of this, but I want to do God's will. I want to serve him. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you that you call us to be more than we are. I thank you that you want to give us our lives meaning and power. I pray, Father, that you will help us to make the decision to carry the cost and to do what you've called us to do. Give us the courage to not flinch 
from what you want us to do. Help us to do whatever it takes. Help us to grow and have a vision to grow and get to the next level or rank in your body. Amen. Everyone, let's stand up. We're going to pray for our streets and then I'm going to let you go. Let's reach out to our streets. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for William Moffat and I pray for Lily Avenue. I pray, Father, that your presence will rest upon our streets. I pray, Father God, that your presence will be there. I pray, Lord, that people will be touched and changed. I pray, Lord, that you will help us to take this fire to our street, wherever we live, that people will give us a vision for our city. We bless you in Jesus' name. Bless this congregation, and I ask you to use them and give them a desire to be promoted. Amen. Before you go, I, 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 a lot of business people need to be online, even if you're not. If you want your faith built at 7 o'clock, we're going to be speaking about faith in tough times. And then secondly, so please be online, and if you, if you get your boss online, if they're battling, or even if you're not, you need to learn. And then secondly, this Thursday at 3 o'clock at Via Celia Mini Square. If you don't know where that is, it's in front of the city hall. It's the old market square. We, the city, the, the, the people of PE are going to get, get together to celebrate the ascension of our Lord. And I ask you to, you can buy a sticker to support it um, at the at information counter. It's 20 Rand. Please go and buy one and, and please be there at 3 o'clock this Thursday. Bless you guys. Thank you for coming.